Ten hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jack here with AOS Coach, everybody's favorite coach. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I'm excited, or we're excited, to uh, bring you the first episode of The Finest Hour. Uh, coach approached me a few months back asking to do a collaborative once a month little podcast slash uh, YouTube video show. And of course, I remember when Coach started. I, we've been boys for years. So uh, I've been uh, really excited to collaborate with this guy. Got to meet him for the first time at LVO. Uh, we're supposed to meet 2020, but everybody knows what happened then. Uh, but yeah, so this episode, we are going to do a little Q&A. Uh, but yeah, if people don't know, I'm Jack from Rerolling Ones. Uh, we do a little battle report channel. We try to keep it light, keep it fun. Not too crunchy, not too many, you know, like we, we know you guys know what's good. So we're going to show you the stuff that's not good and have fun doing it. So, uh, and I will uh, pass it over to the man you guys all know, uh, Coach. G'day, g'day. So yeah, this is uh, this is a little different, folks. So um, it's something that's been the back burner for a while Oops. that I wanted to. You okay? That was me. Oh, freaking out. So I, I've wanted to do something like this for a while, a podcast where, um, look, Jack is a perfect co-host here. I was going to call you a guest because normally we have guests, but you're not my guest. You're my co-host. So this is The Finest Hour. Um, the purpose of The Finest Hour is to be a bit more of a casual podcast style discussion where we can talk about a topic uh, on uh, at hand, but also have a bit more interactivity with, you know, either Discord or Twitter questions in advance. And um, a lot of you have submitted questions for this particular episode. So thank you so much. But we want to have a much more interactive opportunity. And um, the reason I wanted to do this, one, other than just kind of give my thoughts around Age of Sigmar and how it's going, two, Jack and I have known each other for a long time. We, you know, we love wrestling. We love sports. We love Age of Sigmar. We have a great, um, yeah, we, I almost wore my death triangle hat. I almost wore it. But um, so today's episode is going to be about uh, about us. So we are going to do a bit of a intro about who we are and who we are behind the scenes. You might be mm -hmm. a fan of Rerolling Ones. You may be a fan of AOS Coach. You may be a fan of both of us. If you haven't subscribed to it, both of us, go subscribe. Um, and then what we're also going to do, the topic of this particular episode is the Season 2 of General's Handbook 2022, our first experiences. So I've had a couple of games. Uh, I played as a, like a, like a five-game GT well, tournament, we wouldn't call it a GT. Um, so just like what's our experience, what we've kind of noticed going from season uh, one to season two, what we like, what we don't like. And because this is more of an interactive like podcast, um, I'm also happy to really pull out questions from the chat too. So we'll see how we go. Um, actually, this is a really good one from Dale. I reckon we compete here. Jack, how many caps do you own? Uh, I gave I give them away. Uh, I give them away a lot. I, I gave uh, Coach one. I've given Bear like three, and James a couple. Uh, I think at my at my height, I had like thirty. Um, but I I used to not wear hats. Uh, but I got alopecia, so like if I don't like shave my head, I look like a Dalmatian because it comes in all spotty. Uh, so just to hide my shame, I get these hats and I get the logo to represent. All right, this is a really low-hanging fruit here from Martin. What's the time difference between you two? Some time traveling. So it is currently 2 p.m. on Saturday, uh, the 25th. Um, what are you? It's 7, uh, 7 p.m. on a Friday. So I love it. Works pretty well. I love it. We might be able to even switch to six. I could probably do six, and then you could do uh, one. <laughs> whatever, whatever. All right. And by the way, we're getting some theme music too, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm really excited about that, but we won't kind oh, of. We... What about the art? The art, uh, we Steven uh, Valentine from uh, uh, Comic Rat. That, that art's fire. Y'all know it's fire. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's get into some rapid fire questions because we'll be here forever talking to chat and we'll actually get nothing done, um, which is a kudos to the community, how cool you all are and, and um, uh, how yeah, just how awesome you all are. So I'm going to ask you a couple of rapid fire questions that came from the, from discord. So I put a, a you know, like what do people want to know about, about Anthony and Jack? So uh, first off, do you have any favorite musicians or bands? Ooh, uh, back when I was a kid, I like bone thugs and harmony. Big fan, big fan. I like, uh, I feel like pretty much anything you can dance to. I used to dance a lot in my twenties. Uh, and that is like not really a skill that really, 
hold you well later on in life. Like I can kill it if I go to a wedding reception or anything, but love dance music. Uh, and you know, like, so I like, I have a 16 year old and a 14 year old. And so we'll like play this game where it's like whack or not whack. So I'll play stuff from my childhood, which they hate. And they bring me stuff from today, which I in turn hate on because, but it sounds good, but I can't let them win. So yeah, I like uh, stuff that you can dance to. Cool. I'm I'm much more into the things that you can bang ahead to. So metal and rock, whether it's like uh, a monomath, Ramstein, Corn. Like I'm stuck to a particular genre. Although in two weeks' time, I'm going to see Weird Al Yankovic live. Actually, a meet and greet too. So I'm pretty excited. Weird Al is one of my all-time favorites. And karaoke at LVO. I was going to bust out Amish Paradise. That's like one of my karaoke songs. But I lost my voice. So. We'll have to save it for 2024. For sure. Favorite sporting team? What was that? What's your favorite sporting team? Uh, Seahawks. So it's all the, you know, match the colors and stuff. You look at my older armies are all Seahawk colors. But the, here's, here's a little inside secret. I'm actually not that big a fan. <laughs> but people assume I'm like diehard. If they're losing, I'll just go do something else. <laughs> I'm super fair weather. But yeah, Seahawks. I've, uh, so Canterbury, Canterbury Bulldogs is my team, a rugby league team. Um, I have to turn off sometimes because I get too salty and too angry that if we're losing too badly, I, I, I need to yeah. just not watch. I need to go away, remove myself but, from the situation. But like, if you like, but I'm really into MMA. Like I used to travel around the country on the UFCs and local events and stuff. That's my favorite. What brought you into AOS? So I was going to ask you a question like, how long have you been playing Warhammer 4? But let's make it a two-parter. How long oh. have you been playing Warhammer 4 and what brought you into AOS? So uh, I have an older brother. Uh, you might have seen him on my re-rolling ones. His name's Josh. Um, so he's six years older than me. And so like, he's interesting, very interesting guy. So um, he grew up differently. Like he's, he's very different than I am. Like, you know, he was a gangbanger, like going to jail, all that stuff. But as a kid, like he's six years old, me he saw the Hobbit movie, like the cartoon from back in the, like the late seventies, and so he fell in love with that. But he couldn't really like, like show that side to other people. So he poured all that nerdiness into me, and so like he would buy the miniatures and stuff. We didn't even know it was Warhammer at the time, but we bought the third edition box set for uh, Warhammer, and that is the. And so this is like what ninety four or ninety three something like that. And so that's when we first planned. And like I was, I lost to him up until I was 36, and when we first got an AOS, and it's been a it's been a wrap since. So I got into I, I got into Warhammer in 1997, I think it was. So uh, my family moved from um, the city, so we lived in Sydney. Um, we moved north to the country, um, and the people I got to meet um, were Dungeons and Dragons and Warhammer players. And funnily enough, like through a series of events, um, I became a massive Warhammer fan. Whether it was being introduced to Fantasy Battles and Second Edition 40k. Um, I remember mowing somebody's lawn and I got given the first edition Skaven Blood Bowl team, the metal team. Um, I, I remember these little series of, of events that kind of happened. Um, one of my oldest and dearest friends was in White Dwarf for winning a Fantasy Battles Castle. Uh, mm -hmm. All these little series of events kind of happened that just made me become this Warhammer fan. And um, my very first paycheck was um, uh, went to a Warhammer model, despite my mum telling me she wanted like 30% <laughs> in a savings account for rent. Um, not she didn't want rent as like a fifteen nah, year old. I wanted you to pay rent. That's cold blooded. No, she she <laughs> want she wanted she wanted to take it as for savings. So she was gonna like put it to the side and like nah. So yeah, I yeah, bought like yeah. a I bought this warrior priest, the Grand Theogonist, Volcamar the Grim. That um, oh, do you that, still have any of that stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. I've still got oh, my yeah. old <laughs> empire. I've, I've got it somewhere. Oh my god. Uh, so ninety seven. Okay. 97 oh my god the questions are coming through holy, holy wow all right let's let's stick to some of the questions i've got at the moment and then we'll then we'll jump to to chat like it's overwhelming which is awesome and uh maybe maybe part two we'll we'll come back for more of some of this um so pj shard asked what army would you add to age of sigma if you got given the chance whether it's either in the existing law or brand new to the law um so with uh, Age of Sigmar, like, do you want quick answers or do you want to like? No, man, no, 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 no. We go into detail. 
uh, one thing I do like about Age of Sigmar is it's not just uh, Lord of the Rings reheated, which is like a lot of fantasy stuff. Like you can, they, they take some old stuff and then kind of put their own flavor on it. Like you can have elves, but they're not, they're high elves, but they have hammers now and giant like anthropomorphic creatures and foxes and cows and stuff, which is like, you don't see that a lot. But I do love old school dwarves, you know, mining in the ground. So I'd like to bring back the dispossessed. Maybe they can get some tanks, maybe just reimagine dispossessed. And uh, so you can have like a third dwarf faction, but like really build out from them. That's what I like to see. Yeah, I, in a very similar vein, like I was thinking about this question. I'm like, I'd love Bretonia to come back. I'd love the Tomb Kings to come back. I'm sure there's somewhere in the mortal realms where someone likes their horse cavalry. But one thing that I'd love to see is more Sylvaneth and really tap into like Alariel, like Mother Nature. I want to like, I want to see her go Super Saiyan, right? Like I want her to bring out the forest creatures. I want her to bring like elementals and type of like, just, just go like Mother Nature, go crazy and make her the big bad. Like I'd love to see Alariel go, yeah, Super Saiyan. This is not a question. Like I would love people to start jumping Grand Alliances. I would like to see like uh Marathi be like, no, no, I'm gonna be another chaos god. I'm done with this. I would love to see something like that. Who else could jump ship? Like, because I, I would love that as well. I think that you know, whether it's Malarian comes in and brings us over, I'd love to see that. But like Skaven and Destruction seems like an easy one to abandon chaos. Like, you know what? We you we got what we needed out of you. Let's jump ship and work about ourselves. Uh yeah, it'd, it'd be hard to see death do anything because Nagash is Nagash, and you know, so but definitely. Yeah, I I definitely love to see some some faction jumping, um, especially the elves. Like I think there's too many good elves. Like give me some like chaosy destructiony. Yeah. Hell, give me some death type. I I don't know how you do death, but like I'd love to see some some splits across the yeah. the Grand Alliances. That's one of the things that, that's good about the mortal realms. Anything can happen. There's, it's so vast. It's all like, yeah, the wizard did it. Well, we almost got to it, actually, because when Marathi took over Anvil Guard and turned it to Harkuron and attacked Sigma behind his back, it almost like you almost could see a little bit going into destruction or chaos. And obviously they made the, the pact to go and defeat Kragnos, but like maybe there's something in there. Yeah. I, you know, I was something I would like to, I think Tyranids could jump into AOS. I think that'd be cool. Just like, I think that might be cool, you know, because there's not like a lot of it doesn't have like the gears and guns and stuff. Just like, hey, who's Tyranid model? Yeah, piece of, piece, piece of chaos and destruction. Yeah, that, that, that also might work. That, that could possibly work. Um, and I mean, obviously you've got the chaos dwarves that will hopefully come back, but I'd love to see some more of the, the races outside of their primary grand alliance. Yeah. I think we got a little bit of that with the um, the uh, the snake kind of chaos worshipping from Warcry. I forget what they're called, but they're really good in Warhammer right now. But uh, yeah. And as Dale said, you know, maybe we split off to a fifth pantheon. Maybe we have, you know, because order is getting quite fat. And yes. does it does it fracture one day? Does it become two different grand alliances? Or like, I would like to see a schism in Stormcast. And that's a good way to split up models because there's a lot there's a lot of models in that range. But yeah. Hey. Uh weird knobs. I would love to see Dark Oath as its own faction too. There's something about the Dark Oath. I love the War Queen. I love not Conan the Barbarian. I love that as a faction. And yes, Craig not becoming the bot god that he was modeled to be. Yes, spooky Luke. It's it's the greatest shame that Age of Sigma in, in the in recent years. Uh do you have a most memorable game? So Tweak Synth had said, uh, do you have a most memorable game? And do you remember it for competitive reasons or a great story? Uh, it's For me, it's like, uh, that's one of my favorite things about the game is like, because I've, you know, we've, I'm not sure if you tried TTS before. I've played it a few times and like, it is just not why I play it. It is just the game. And the game, you know, it's gotten a lot better because we've been down since day one, right? And we can see the progress of the game. But the game is always and will ever be flawed. It's never going to be completely balanced. But I go to the interaction with the people, get to meet them, like laughing, joking around. And there's so, like, it'd be it's favorite games. Like, I remember, like, driving down to North Carolina from Seattle, which is across the country. 
and I've been talking trash all summer. This is like during the fifth edition fantasy because I finally started winning games back uh, in, in Seattle where I live. And I was talking trash to my brother. I was like, wait till I get my beast of chaos down there. And he beat me with his lizard men. We played on the floor. We still talk about it to this day. So those moments, like, you remember, hey, remember when that happened? Remember when you rolled four sixes? Like, that's why I play the game. Those little memories with people. I think that's special. And like doing the YouTube channel, people will bring up stuff that happened in the game from three years ago. I was like, oh, you watched that? That's crazy. But yeah. I, I, yeah, I agree with you. I, um, my most memorable moment, I'll never forget it. Um, cause I, I thought about these questions. So tweak sin. Thank you for the uh, great question. Um, I thought about it a lot and I'm like, I got a chance to play one of my oldest and dearest friends, Dave at Warhammer world. So we get a book to table. It was incredible to play in England. Um, I play my oldest and dearest friend, the, my original opponent 20 years later, we still play today. So those little things like are incredible, but my number one gaming moment, I'll never forget the orcs and goblins army in Warhammer fantasy battles charged into my volley gun and my volley gun had released its barrels. So it's like three crew idiots and this gargan or gar little giant was on like a couple of wounds left. And I'll never forget. I rolled a five to hit a five to wound. And I just imagined that, you know, the artillery crew hit it in its infected toe and did its final wound. It toppled over <laughs> and like one or two crew idiot survived, but it's those crazy moments where mm -hmm. something that was completely unexpected, mm -hmm. it never changed the game. It didn't swing it from a loss to a win or anything, but yeah. it was just like those crazy moments that you could tell a story around yeah I, uh, my buddy like when the new croak came out the first time my buddy matt got to play him i did three wounds he rolled three sixes like yeah he's dead pick him up <laughs> it was just like and those things like I, I like i played a game last year and uh, this is a negative one on me i got it was marathi versus night haunt or daughters of cain versus night haunt and marathi's on three wounds left and i rolled the miscast and I did six or three wounds. I rolled a six and she failed all three of her, of her wards. So Marathi died to her own spell. But I'll never forget, even though it was against me, like I never, I never forget that moment because um, it's just a great storytelling moment. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things. Like when you celebrate your opponent's successes, I always try to like remember that because I think we've all played people who like, oh man, this isn't like, there are people who will complain as they're beating you too. And I always try to be like, all right, let me make sure I we high five after everything. Yeah. We we cheer after everything. So I want yeah. people to have this good interaction. Yeah, I, I try to high five and celebrate it, it, again as much as it might hurt you. It's a game. It's collaborative yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. um, good question from Greenskin Gaming. I'll pull this one up. Um, what Black Library character would you bring to the tabletop? Now I've got an immediate answer. If you want to have a few seconds. Oh. All right, Play Garden. Uh, it's a story about Stormcast versus Nurgle. I want to see the the Knights of is it the Knights of the Fly or the 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 Fly Knights? Basically, there's this like chivalrous knight knight army that is uh, a Nurgle, and it's actually quite interesting because you would expect Nurgle to be against Stormcast, but actually they were quite chivalry in in despite their being Nurgleness. So um, that for me was like. I'd love to see the Knights of the Fly. I think they're called. I can't think what their name is exactly, but I'd love to see them on the tabletop. Yeah, I have a, a love-hate relationship with uh, AOS books and Black Library. I, uh, I like so initially. I was like, because I love fantasy books. Like I love a Wheel of Time. You know, um, you know, Song of Ice and Fire. All the like, I'm a big fan. And so when they started producing AOS books, I was listening to them and getting excited. And then I kind of got like that. They had the app. And I felt I got screwed over on the app. I paid for a bunch of like, they, they were releasing these one shots and then they released like a fourth one and I bought it. And it was just the first three like squished together in one. And I was like, did you, I, I felt bad. I was like, do you just want you to shake me upside down GW? And like, really? Uh, and I'm like, I was like, I'm tired of pretending these mediocre books are awesome or whatever. But I will say the soul wars, the, uh, the, I forget his name, but he got killed and then Nagash like captured his soul and he became like a wraith or whatever or a like bad guy. Uh, that guy in uh, that guy in uh, like Legion of uh, or Soul Blight or something like that. A former soul, Stormcast guy that's taken over by someone else. Or like one, there was a Stormcast guy who went to Nurgle then back to Stormcast. That guy. Hmm. I forget his name. 
I, I'm going to cheat and add another one because yep. I just thought I just thought about this. Hamilcar, Hamilcar from Stormcast Eternals. When I watched that Warhammer Plus animation, I, I looked at it and I thought, mm -hmm. how on earth is this not a model yet? Hamilcar was boss. Who's the, there's an, um, I read the uh, audio book, but read uh, the new Gotrek and Felix. That was my favorite one where the, a Gotrek appeared because he sounded like all the people who originally were complaining about Age of Sigmar. Like, why are you called Duridan? You're dwarves and whatnot. I, I felt like he embodied that. But the, uh, I think there's a, uh, like a dark elf who's his sidekick now. Like, I think they should bring her in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, look, there's a lot of great, cool characters, but um, they're just a couple. Maybe you can let us know. Look, I'm not the biggest Black Library uh, reader. I actually listen to more to the audio books, but um, there are some really good memorable characters, and I, I thoroughly enjoy, like, City of Secrets. That was a really good book that I enjoyed. Um, a lot of great characters. But um, Berggraf asked favorite models, um, and I swear this show is not going to be all about just um, a Q and A. It could be actually. Well, yeah, we, we 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 do have some Age of Sigma uh, Caesar and two questions we want to ask. But um, what's your favorite models, and and why are wizards just cooler than other heroes? Uh, so favorite model, Belcor is still fun. that model is fire. Like he is hard to uh, pass up. Um, but wizards, like I'm corn at heart, so wizards are okay. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I, I, I'm a big fan of wizards. I love wizards. So, um, I think for me, my favorite models. I'm a sucker for monster heroes. So, like the greater demons, all four greater demons, like just sing to me. And I think the Slanesh one, especially. Although, you know, I could run four bloodthirsters and be a very happy person. I'd be happy to run like Kairos and a bin chicken and summon a bin chicken and that'd be my army. Like okay. uh are there any other miniature games? So Heat Shell asking, um, are there any other miniature games that you play or plan to play? Um and do you think A Sigma could adopt anything from them? Um, I've played Marvel a couple times. Um, I have some uh, friends who are really like top tier Adepticon, you know, top three in the country at uh, Legion, and uh, and so I'm I'm interested in getting to that. Um, I guess there's Wookies coming out that I think you know I'm like fine, I'll I'll try this. But it's one of those things like when I'm playing another game, I'm always like, well, I could just be playing AOS. But you eventually you do have burnout sometimes, and it's nice. I played Warcry for the first time like since it came out a while ago and I forgot how fun that game was. And, you know, and so, uh, yeah, but it's like, you know, trying to get, you know, especially what I'm not trying to chase it anymore as far as like, you know, my ITC scores and stuff like that. And so it's like, I'm open to, I'm fine where I am at in the game. I'm not trying to get better. And uh, so I'm open to playing 40K. Uh, Angron looks really cool. So I might get into that. I, I want to apologize, by the way. I realized I made a massive blunder uh, when I said four greater demons. Yes, Gavin, you're a part of the range. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I do like the I, I do like Skaven as well. I, I really do like um, the 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 big um, demons. You, you need a model refresh, but I'd be uh, Skaven's cool. But like when I look at like Lord of Change, the Great Unclean One, the Bloodthirster, I just want to run an army with them. Hmm. so um that's <laughs> i knew i'd upset so enjoy her too that was perfect <laughs> i know i'm sorry i'm sorry which which actually kind of leads me to me right like i don't like playing games outside of age of sigma um i like i prefer to play video games but of the miniature games i love blood bowl i love mordheim i love um a, a game outside of the games workshop arena called frostgrave um, which is more of like a Dungeons and Dragons style. You know, you've got a master here, a wizard, and you've got an apprentice wizard, and then you've got a war band of basically NPC, like just idiots who die, and you replace them pretty quickly. But it's like this collaborative um, campaign experience where you go through, and much like Dungeons and Dragons, there's like four or five interlinked campaigns. Things happen like a war cry. Um, there can be monsters as well. So it doesn't have to be you versus your mate. It could be you two teaming up to, to defeat the, the bad guy. Um, there's a lot of cool games, but just for me, like when I'm not playing Age of Sigma, I'd rather just play video games. I'd rather play like Civilization. I'd rather play, you know, The Sims. I'd rather play like just something that's just mindless and fun. Yeah. 
do you uh do you do if you do play these other games do you ever go to any other like tournament settings so funnily enough there's a tournament not far from my house a 40k one that's happening right now that i might go check out um just to see how it is but um not really not really i did want to go to um there was a magic the gathering master i don't know what they call their grand tournament type event um just before magic started pulling their money away from in real life tournaments they put it all towards like um online tournaments but i wanted to go to the magic the gathering because i wanted to see what they do at such a big scale and how it works and and what we could learn from them but uh alas it got cancelled because of covid and then they've pulled their money and put it towards um online tournaments yeah that was one of the, uh, the offshoot that was one of the biggest surprises because i actually took a big gap in my warhammer clan like i played as a kid up until like you know 2002 maybe 2001 and then i stopped playing until uh like 2016 so a year into aos is when i got back into it and how big how much magic blew up in the interim it's just like that game is crazy well it's crazy because i actually did play original magic the gathering i think it was like 95 96 97 yeah. i was playing magic and i had black lotus i had all of yeah, the cards yeah, that are now yeah, worth yeah. and like back in then like you never thought it was a collectible so like i probably trashed my cards i threw them away yeah. i never no, i never no sleeve them to put them into nah. you're like none of that stuff like uh it's crazy it's crazy how much the world has changed. hindsight right like i've got like michael jordan basketball cards somewhere and like <laughs> penny hardaway and like yeah. i have no idea where they are them. no idea where my michael jordan cards are <laughs> Um, all right, a couple of other questions. Uh, what is your favorite army to play with? Ooh, um, I, I really like Daughters of Cain to play with, like non-competitive stuff. Um, if you're going to a tournament setting, like, so I uh, I was playing with the Crave. It's been on uh, 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 Rerolling Ones a couple times because I love that aspect of your gambling. Anytime I roll a four, I get to fight again. And that little tech of piling in and all this stuff, whatever that does it, it, it like it reaches my soul because there's gambling involved there's like i ally in the uh, uh alapex to shoot you with my net so you can't pile in so i can pile in and you can't all that stuff but i took it to a tournament once and i like the game would be we go down to the wire every time because there's so many models and so i didn't get to go around and socialize and look at people's armors and have fun with people so by the time i got finished everybody was either you know on to the next round or whatever uh, so that was, it's fun to play, like, in a casual setting. So I guess I think Daughters of Cain, that specific Kraith army is my favorite to play. It's funny because in fantasy battles, I was always the good guy. I always played Empire. I loved my dwarves. I played the good guy armies. Now, in Age of Sigma, I've become a destruction person. So much so that I've actually started printing off my own loon crown. So um, this is a test print. I'm going to make a real one. I can wear... But Gitson and Gargans are probably my favorites, and I want to run Iron Jaws. Um, I think I'm a destruction person at heart. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. There's something about them. I love. I think the the gambling element to it. Um, they this they're just so much fun. Mm -hmm. I just love them so much. Question I was going to segue into anyway, but Greenskin asking the same question that Forty Two asked is after Gur, what uh, what what's the other incarnate that we want to see next, and what realm and um, bonus points do you have any any realm rules? So, um, uh, so incarnates, in, incarnate of light, and it can look like a Protoss kind of thing from uh, Starcraft. Um, you know, just a aura of. You know, it could like be subtract because it's so bright. It could like subtract from hitting, or something like that. Or if it focuses on something bonus to hit, something that's uh, it is a not game changing enough where you saw it everywhere, like you did Gur. I mean, the incarnate of uh, the Gur. It was just like for a while. It was that's what you played. It was like it was that, and there was another thing that you just saw everywhere. It's like okay, can we get it back to? So yeah, something that is that's a bonus, but also you're not going to see it everywhere. So I, I would like to go to Hish, Hish next. But I think actually we might be going to Azir if I'm off on this stuff and maybe an incarnate of lightning. So there we go. So whenever I think of incarnates, I think of, I don't know if you've ever seen these, Jack, but back at the end of Fantasy Battles, um, 
Forge World created two incarnates. There was a third meant to be coming, but it got cancelled. So there was the the elemental incarnate of beast uh, and the mm. elemental incarnate of fire. And then there was meant to be a death one. So I would love to see that continue. As much as I hated the incarnate rules, I do think there's a place for them. But I want to see them at like a 300-point level with rules that reflect a 300 point, 300 point yeah. I don't want I don't want a 500 point game changer give me a 300 point support piece good character but don't make it super powerful yeah I agree I agree just like or like even a after a while it's like just say it's it's for the Thondia battle pack and you know people could play with it if they wanted to yeah tone it down but i would if 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 we're gonna see them and look you know i know they're um they do create opinions i think the reality is is that they're coming so we just got to accept that yeah. more incarnates are coming uh but that's Ooh, why i, I want to tone them down go on i got a question for you is a uh, topical what do you think of the regiments of renown that uh, kind of were announced like a, a week ago let me say what i wanted to say with the incarnate okay. I, I just want guy Ron. I feel like I feel like we whisked through Guy Ran very quickly in first edition and second edition when the game was still maturing, but there's so much untapped goodness in Guy Ran that I'd love to go back. It kind of goes back to my Alariel comment. Um, you got Maggotkin of Nurgle, you got Alariel and Sylvaneth doing really well. Give me more Guy Ran, then let's move to like Shimon or something. Regiments of renown. I don't know because we haven't seen the rules yet. Mm. Um, the, the rules are coming in white dwarf. I have concerns about the pink horror one. So having like a wizard pink horrors and three endless spells. But then I see like the cruel boys with the beast skewer bow and a couple of other shooty idiots that as a destruction player, I'd really like sons have no shooty gets shooties pretty average. Um, yes, you can do lots of attacks, but it's hard to see without the rules. Okay, if it's... Uh, did you, oh, did you think, I'm asking the question now, did you think we'd be in Gur this long? <sighs> no. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm Gur'd out. <laughs> uh, look, I enjoy Gur. Gur is a great setting, but I wonder, are we going to start doing additions in a realm? And does that mean we're going to have to go through eight editions until we finally get through all of the eight realms? For sure. It's like, it's great to expand Gur, but I want to, I want to go into somewhere else. And whether it's going back to Akshi, whether it's going back to Gairan, I feel like we're not quite ready yet to go to all to Gur, to Ulgu, or we're not ready to go to Hish yet. Um, I don't know. Like I have enjoyed it, but it's time to move on. Give me some maps. Give me some new rules. What, what are you? I, I have I have loved the because uh, I take the battle major girl a lot, so I'm enjoying that. But it is like I did not think we'd be here this long. Where, you know, like maybe hopefully the next season or the next you know we go to two planes and so we can do the maybe the Hish and Shyish one because that's kind of like dueling planes and whatnot. But it's ready to move on. Yeah, I mean, like we've got um, actually quite detailed, especially through Soulbound, the RPG. Um, we've, and obviously the City of Sigma are based there. Gairan has got some good lore and rules. I feel like Shimon is almost ready for the next one. Um, we don't know enough about Ulgu and yeah, Malarian might come in from, um, from the Shadow Realm. But I feel like that's more maybe Malarian coming into another realm as opposed to everyone kind of moving to um, Ulgu. Mm -hmm. um but i'd love just to see uh, look, i think one of the things that i want to see and um i made this as a comment later on is do you remember in second edition where we had all those realm artifacts and realm spells and when you chose your army to come from a realm it meant something mm -hmm. we don't have that anymore like yeah. it doesn't mean anything yeah yeah, I, yeah we can take that back because yeah the only thing it the only bonus you get from being Gur is the Gur battle range plus one of cares great let's see how long that lasts with the um dawnbringer crusades eventually coming but um yeah i think i think um i'm i'm hoping it all oh, i'll say on the regiments before we move on to actually the, the the topic at hand is i hope to god that the pink horrors do not split and split again 
Like, like if they do like the D3 mortal wounds, I'm cool. I'm cool. But if that turns into split and split again, and you have the three endless spells with a couple of wizards. It's all fun. We'll see. Please we'll don't. See. Please don't. Any other, any other questions you want to ask? Oh, no, like, no, no, no. Like this, this is getting good. This is getting good. All right. And by the way, if there's other questions in the chat, like, uh, do you, uh, let's pull up a couple of ones. Um, and then we're going to move into season two of the General's Handbook 2022. Uh, do we think the new, new General's Handbook will still be in GER? I'm hoping no. I'm hoping yeah. for, we kind of, we close the door and we move somewhere else. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Because we still got, what, we got five months on it. So. Yeah. Like, what well, it means like with season three, we had, General's Handbook 2021 was was Gur. We've had two books now. Is 2022 yeah. is now Gur. So that's two years or three books. So I'm hoping that's enough for now. Um, but the story hasn't progressed. Like we True. had Kragnos that was fighting, uh, trying to get to Malice, all the City of Ex uh, Secrets, Excelsius. But what's happened in the lore since? Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. It kind of feels like Broken Realms kind of was a story arc and nothing's really happened since then. So... I don't know. Let's get back on track with some 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 of the law. Uh, all right, all right no, no critical questions in the chat. So let's get into the topic at hand. And that's not to say we're not going to get into the chat as well. But what I wanted to talk today about was about season two, 2022, um, the new general's handbook. It is the handbook that has uh, all about Galatian champions. It is uh, the, the loss of bounty hunters. We have six battle plans that stayed from the old book and six new ones. We've had a bunch of different realm rules. Um, and we've obviously had Gits come out. We've had Beast of Chaos come out. Um, Seraphon has been announced. Um, we've seen some some sneaky pictures of the Carriage and Overlords with the Code Master, which or the Code Writer, whatever it is, which um, looks like the the GW Rules Lawyer, um, and and who knows what that what's what it's going to do. I don't know if it has like an um actually type rule, but uh, I guess we'll stay tuned for KO. But what's your thoughts so far? It's been like a month, a month and a half, I guess, for you and I. You know, we had Adept uh, Adepticon, we had LVO. So LVO kind of was our focus. Yeah. And we've probably only had like a month, six weeks at best for the new season. Uh, so this one, uh, like, so last uh, season, I actually was, it was kind of during the sort of relaunch, like re-rolling ones, becoming more dedicated, getting weekly content out and stuff like that. So I really didn't get to view at it, view the last season out for uh, competitive stuff because I didn't really do any tournaments or anything. But I got to... Uh, I'm, getting back into doing that, right? We got a sparkle parties up here in two weeks and I'm, you know, here's the thing, uh, <laughs> the question for the chat. Now I'm still working on my list, but with Dom Bringer's crusade coming out, I'm in, I'm just starting to paint 30 free guild crossbowmen. And in the back of my head, I'm like, I don't want to paint these and then only get to use them for, you know, four months or five months or, you know, actually it's going to be the end of the year. So I get, I'll get some time out of them, but I'm like, oh man, just because you hear rumors and I don't put a lot of stock in rumors, but like, should I paint these guys or just take Iron Drakes? <laughs> what do you think free guild's going away, Chet? It's tough, right? Because one of the cool things about having a yearly general's handbook, and that's a question I want to ask you a little bit mm -hmm. later is, do we like six months or 12 months? Mm -hmm. It's hard to plan an army. And I think mm -hmm. for me right now, I'm more likely to play one of my existing armies whether rather than start a new army. So right now I'm playing with my gits, I'm playing with my sons, I'm playing with my daughters or my stormcast. They're all armies that I've had already that I might tweak or add a new unit to, but it's not inspiring me to go and start a new army because starting a new army and starting a new general's handbook and doing it within six months. And then by the time the new general's handbook comes out, the army might be ready or it might be just bad, you know, very average painted at best. Everything changes. Mm -hmm. So for me, I enjoy the new season. Yeah but I wouldn't yeah, say it's encouraging me to start a new army. I think uh, the, like this new season, I do like it because they're the, even the uh, being able to protect, uh, protect your foot heroes is so big. Uh, and so it's like, as somebody who played a lot of shooting, you could still play a lot of shooting and just shoot the stuff that's in front of that unit first or take the battalion. But uh, I'm, I'm enjoying this one. And even though I got to play the last one, not a ton, but enough, 
Uh, and so one of the biggest things I like about the new uh, season is I don't have to hear people complain about bounty hunters. So I really dig that. Yeah, B bounty hunters was very decisive and I'm surprised that they never FAQ'd or errated it. it. It was one of the things that came out of the gates early that people disliked. It changed the meta and it skewed army lists for that whole six months because you never, you didn't see zombies, you didn't see Mortec Guard, you didn't see thralls of witch elves, you didn't see those types of horde style armies, and it really kind of skewed you to one particular build. Um, I agree with Weird Knobs, by the way. I would probably stay away from Cities of Sigma if if I didn't own the faction already. I would not go out and buy anything new. It's just like it, it feels like too much of a risk for me. But if you already own it, you're good. Um, yeah. but like, it, cause like, I, I'm interested in Lumineth cause I played Lumineth like, uh, I think last book and I think Settler's Gain has a lot of potential, right? Cause like it, you can combine some really cool stuff in Lumineth with the shooting of cities. That's kind of my thought on it, but I really don't want to paint 30 of these guys. And then, well, I guess, you know, chaos in the old, uh, the old world, you know, maybe <laughs> I can put, think of there, but who knows? If he already had it, happy days. Yeah. If you don't have it already, it's a risk. Um, but mm. I, overall, I've really enjoyed season two. I, I don't think it's perfect by any means, but I think I'm already enjoying it more than season one. Yeah. Well, thanks, Kurt. Thank you. Kurt just said uh, he gave me some. Appreciate that in the chat. Uh, I, the, the free guild is as a play uh, a play as that one. Yeah. Cool. Um. So with season two have you have you played any tournaments yet or have it just been more like pick up games games on the channel uh, pick up games play a few practice games i'm trying um you know just some stuff i can't talk about uh but i'm um, definitely uh yeah i'm enjoying season two i like the i love the uh the little enhancements you get for your uh, galician champions like in watching people explore old stuff that you know like the uh the uh Iron Jaws Warlord on foot that people never really took. Now people are giving him Tunnel Master and like, you know, Mighty Destroyer and messing stuff up with them. And it's like, oh, that's so such a cool thing. And so I like being able to use new rules with models that didn't get seen a lot. Has your list changed much? And by the way, Jack is referring to he's now a play tester for the old world. So it's coming soon, folks. That's, <laughs> I didn't that's, that, 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 that's the thing he's talking about. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> hopefully that comes soon i think it's next year at least at the at the earliest but um but i'm i am looking forward to the old worlds but although blood bowl 3 dropped over just recently i'm I'm very keen to start playing blood bowl uh, on the computer again i love blood bowl have you have you noticed your army has changed at all um have uh, yeah, you... not, yeah i've i've been especially with the battle tactics when their battle tactics are sp specifically unique Galician champions you always want to keep that in mind because sure, like, sorry, sons of Hammett, but sure you can kill people, but winning the game is getting points because you can still table your opponent and lose. And so always, you, especially like when it's hard to get battle tactics sometimes anyway, you want more options. So I've added more foot troop hero Galician champions to my armies. Yeah. What, what... So, so my armies, right? So the armies that I play the most is, uh, in no particular order, Glooms by Gits, Sons, Daughters, Stormcast, Cities. They, they're the kind of the five that I traditionally rotate towards. I don't think my army has changed much yet in regards to Galatian champions. I'm not adding more Galatian champions because I feel like I need to. They've always had like two or three Galatian champions um, anyway, so I haven't had to ramp that up. I think the impacts for me is the loss of bounty hunters now encourages me to run more battle line. I, I don't have to think about more about, you know, the double damage. I don't have to think about those types of things. Um, I don't have to try to always have to go one drop just to try to avoid my opponent and get a jump onto them. Um, I feel like going high drops is actually an okay strategy right now. Um, yeah. Some armies are still going to want to be one drop or, or as, as little as possible, but I feel like, you don't have to go battle reg or double battle reg and look for battle line that are not Galatian veterans anymore. Mm -hmm. Question from Greenskin Gaming. Um, this is a side one. 
Uh, if you could create a universal enhancement, what would it be? I feel like we need more banners for Totem Heroes. Do you have a, 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 a Ooh, quick pretty, thought? Great. great. I'll have to think about it. Well, you go first while I think about it. We, the ones we have are, you know, we got the impact hit ones. We count more on uh, objectives. Teleporter is really good. Uh, uh, I like priests. You know, we always had arcane tomes, you know, priestly trappings. We'll get a little vestment on people. You know, you can bless. I'd love to see Battle Standard Bearers back. Because you've got the the the, the wizard, the, the hero banner in Lumineth. You don't see him ever. You see it in Stormcast. And outside of the Mortal Wound Bomb list that you're currently seeing, you never really see the banner people. And you just look at Slaves to Darkness and you look at how much that has changed. Being able to give those um, ensorcelled banners to knights, warriors and um whatever else mm -hmm. um I, th I think magic banners like there's something in it like it's just inherently warhammer for me so i'd love to see whether it makes a totem hero whether it is um supercharges them in some way or fashion give me more banner people give me more yeah. totems it can even be like extend the range of like uh, like command uh, abilities he can give out right so you issue commands 24 inches, whatever, like something, you know, I think, yeah, it's a good uh, unexplored uh, area. We need a, uh, like an umbral spell portal for priests. The amount of times I want to put on curse, but I can never teleport within range. <laughs> Getting that, that little here. Like I need like a, I need like the, a little bit more. The, I just need that little bit more. Like give me a, a portal. Give me um, the old, do you remember the old um, uh, vortex? This The vortex. Give me the vortex that encourages the priest to, to extend the range. Yeah. Priestly trappings makes you a priest. And if you already are a priest, it doubles your range of your prayer. I like Ooh. it. I dig it. Before we get into the next question around the general's handbook, um, Elliot asking, what do you look for when it comes to picking a new army? This could be a whole show in itself, by the way. But top yeah. of mind, what what what, what do you look for? Uh, not the rules. I'm not a like like that's secondary to me. It's like I actually have the luxury or the uh, privilege, if you will, um, of having a YouTube channel, having a ton of armies, and so like I will always like. And I realize this about me because you'd see people really get like a gets player or something like that. Like I need my new book. This sucks. I, this, uh, I'm like, well, go play one of your other 18 armies like me. Like, you're like, oh, not everybody has every army, you know, and get sent stuff. And you'll realize, like, yeah, that's kind of selfish. And so I think, like, for me, I like it. If it looks cool, I really like how they're getting back into making armies more thematic. Like, I remember playing against Nurgle for the first time and realizing how fast they were in the first edition of Nurgle. And now they're just, they're not as fast, but they're very survivable. So I like stuff that looks cool. Um, I, prefer not to play horde stuff because it's just you know you know movement trays and all that stuff and just moving that stuff around and especially if you do a lot of tournament stuff i think it's on you to finish a game on time so if you're playing a horde army it's kind of like not fair for your opponent even though it's part of the game right because we're trying to put this you know game into a certain box like hey there's a tournaments and it's like it can be i've played against people like skaven with hundreds of models and I'm like, dude, I got like two turns. And so, but it's like, you know, this is what it is. And so I prefer not Horde Armies, but other than that, as long as it looks cool. But if you're playing fast, then it doesn't actually yeah. yes. impact, right? And we are seeing more tournaments pick up chess clocks. But if I'm playing within my allocated time and I've got a hundred, because I play Gits, right? And I, I do try to play fast. And I think I rarely don't get through five rounds. So, um, I'm very fast and I'm very deliberate with what I do. I'll use movement trace when I need to, especially to move up, like speed up the movement phase. Um, I'll have like little tactics and, and ways to kind of speed that up. But yeah, there's been plenty of times where I've played an army. Hell, I've played armies that have very little, little models, but they, they are very slow in picking the battle tactics, being, you know, indecisive with their movements or which spell to cast yeah. first. Oh, that him and Han, like, oh, it's like, Pick something, go. We're running out of time. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's a challenge. But yes, you, there is inherently you've got to think about that. Um, for me, I think when I think of my army, like I think about something that really inspires me. Whether it is uh, a piece of lore, 
whether it is a piece of art, whether I look at a model and I think I could do something with this, whether it's a paint scheme, whether it's a conversion, whether it is an idea that I can build an army around. Um, and and I, when I look at my army, right, like my daughters of Cain, I corrupted them as Slanesh, so I had them very much like a conversion yeah, yeah, idea. My Stormcast, I had a color scheme because I wanted to paint them red like a Blood Angels almost, um, very non-Stormcasty with the gold and things like that. Um, my gits were just so much fun and I painted with so many squigs and, um, you know, when I think of my armies, it's normally because something has triggered me, it's, whether it's a model, whether it is uh, a story, whether it is a character and I'm like, right, I'm going to commit to that. I have a uh, question like off the subject for us, War as Age of Sigmar stuff. So, uh, I know, you know, Warhammer Weekly, which is bigger inspiration for me getting into the hobby, uh, back into the hobby. Uh, they always do these things like, hey, you know, Tommy, Jimmy, Spike, all that stuff, right? And the I magic, I the still, magic profiles, the magic yeah, profiles. I, I still don't get it, but there is this thing where I, <clears throat> somebody could tell me a good list, like, oh, this is good. I don't know why it's good. I love making my own list, and then take it to a tournament. It's like, hey, like in presenting it, hey, this is pretty good, right? Like, I have a Settlers game list that's running a, a Valinor and a, a Frost Phoenix with the anointed on top. And so it has this minus one to hit, minus one to wound bubble, and it, it's so fun, right? And so you have the, you know, the uh, the uh, Lumineth lore seeker dropping purple sun. I'm shooting with my like crossbow bolts and all this stuff, and it's such a cool thing. Uh, but it is like that's the thing with the Frigo Guard. I'm like, oh man, I need to get these done before they go away. But yeah, that's my favorite thing about like building an army, and not saying like net listing is a viable. That's perfectly fine, but for me, that is my sort of thing. I build it. I take it to a tournament and I present it. What about you? What, like, what do you like to do? Yeah, a bit of both. Like I will rarely, I never find a net list. Um, it's funny actually, because my own discord was pissing me off for a long time. So when I was picking up Daughters of Cain for the first time and trying to work out how I want to run Daughters, the concept and the idea that I had was around Witch Elves. And um, the challenge that I had is that Daughters of Cain have been dominated by snakes. So everyone's feedback was add snakes to the list. And I'm like, I don't want snakes. That's not the point <laughs> of my list. Like I am very aware guys that snakes are good. I like, I like this is not, this, this, not this is not surprising me. Yes. Crystal touch is good. Yes. Did you know they do mortal wounds uh, when they, yes. after the, they fight? It's crazy. Huh? <laughs> yes. I'm very aware. So like, let's put that to the side for a second. But it's interesting because um, for a lot of people, when they go to like a chat, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Discord, whether it's Twitter, 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 and they're like, you know, give me feedback on my list. A lot of people don't set up the go, well, this is what I'm trying to achieve because we all play differently. You know, someone really likes shooting. Someone really likes, like, I hate being one drop. I despise being one drop. I'm okay with being multiple drops. You know, for some people, they want to build their army around a magic or an idea or a concept. And I think it's important to share that and go, right, well, this is what my list is trying to do. This is how I try to achieve mm -hmm. it. And one of the reasons I hate being one drop is I, my play style is I'm a counter player. So I'm somebody who likes to look at my opponent, let them make their first moves and, and outsmart them, out counter mm -hmm. them with tactics and ideas and 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 that's why i never play like the double battle regiment um iron jaws i won't turn one you because that's not the way i like to play um counter puncher counter puncher same thing and I, I, what do you do react you know and like it, it's one of the one of the things like i think gets overlooked and like gets dismissed by a lot of like casual or narrative players is the skill it takes to be good at this game competitively people are like oh he just took that list no it's like I've played some of the best players in the world, and I've occasionally beat some of them, Jeremy B. Uh, but I, but like I know what it takes to be like when people practice on their kitchen table and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, like yeah, that ain't me. <laughs> I roll up. I, I'm there. I'm there to party. I'm there to sing karaoke between days. That's what I do. <laughs> well, you see it. You see it at tournaments where people have taken a top performing list. They yeah. then take it to their tournament, and they don't do as well. They go two, three, or three, two. And it's because the list is not the winner. It's mm -hmm. the micro decisions and everything you do during the game that gets you the five and O. Oh. That's why mm -hmm. um, that's why you can get people who go five and O oh with OBR at their worst. 
That's why you get these off meta lists that do really well at a tournament, not because the list is good, because mm -hmm. the person worked their ass off with the game. Yeah, like KO, when the people went in with KO back, with like then it became good again because they it was written off. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just watching the chat, there's some cracking questions and cracking things. Quick one from uh, my favorite friend. I'm sorry, Skaven again. I humbly apologize. Don't don't put any uh, holes in my cheese. What what are some of your favorite ways to handle the buckets of dice when you run hordes? So, um, weird knobs had already said one of the things that I do is um, have my dice in groups of 10. So I know um, exactly mm -hmm. like quickly can grab dice. Mm -hmm. um, what else do I do? Movement trays, especially for the first two rounds. So um, I'll move them off their movement trays as I start to kind of manipulate the board going for pylons. But turn one, turn two, and even deployment, movement trays like the um, uh, mini mag tray, which are just magnetic trays that have no base, like they just slide off really quickly. Um, what else? Just be very deliberate. Be very quick to go, right, I've got 10 yep. spells to cast. Like if I'm Lumineth, I've got 10 spells to cast. Here's my five that I always cast. Here's the extra ones that I might cast depending on the situation, but just yeah. find those I, those, those like, moments. And so it's like, I would, I would say people like, you're obviously going to, people are going to go to the tournament and this is their first tournament, but make sure you know yourself. What's up, Current? Make sure you know your stuff. Uh, and I learned that too, because I, if I'm going to say people need to go to a tournament, prepare to finish. And so I learned, hey, I always have my 10 sets of dice. I need these. Okay, I have these. This is 30. This unit has 32 attacks. If there's 10 models, boom, 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 get these going. Pick, you know, pick up all my misses. Make sure you uh, ask your opponent, hey, look at this good. And do like it, it, that's why I didn't really enjoy it, because I didn't get to BS. It was just on the trying to finish the game. And it, but yeah, it is the you just if you're gonna play hordes, make sure you're prepared. Be deliberate too. Like I will think about the battle plan and where I ideally want to deploy and who are the support characters that will go with certain units. So that when I get to the table and I've got a hundred goblins to put down on the table, I know that this is the formation that I want. And these are the characters that I need that are gonna be supported this, and this is what I'm trying to achieve. So uh, be very deliberate because it will, if you take ages to deploy and then ages to pick your battle tactic and then ages to cast your spells and then ages to move, yeah, you won't get to turn three. Just a challenge. Anyway, what do you like about the current battle pack? Uh, I look, well, it's tongue in cheek, but that bounty hunters is gone. That's one of the big ones. Uh, yep. And uh, protecting uh, foot heroes. I do love to shoot. I'm a, uh, you know, guru or shoot you. Uh, but it's like seeing people like, okay, I can now, I can sit here and my guy's protected. You're not just going to snipe out my crucial piece unless you're going to spend resources to take this battalion. So I like that. Do you like the sharpshooter battalion or are you not no, taking it? I'll pass on it. I'll just shoot the unit first, then shoot the little guy. Okay. Because that's the challenge, right? For yeah. shooting armies, you want to be low drop and ideally one drop. And mm -hmm. yeah, you can take sharpshooters, but you're now a minimum four drop. Mm -hmm. And you may lose a turn of shooting because your opponent goes, cool, you take first, and you waste one of your five rounds of shooting. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Stormcast, which in that case, you come from reserve. Pew, pew. Yep. I just, yeah. Here's another uh, controversial you know, opinion. I think they should remove the nerf, nerfs from Stormcast. I think, you know, Stormcast, they there's enough books that have come out. Just rewrite the battle scroll, take off all those things, make the dragons, dragons are fine again, make them the 280 originally. There's enough, there's enough power out there. Leave my dragons alone. Leave my dragons alone. Yeah. I what? just want to shoot. I just want to shoot in the hero phase with six long strikes again. That's all I want. Yeah, it, 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 it is funny that long strikes can't shoot in the hero phase once per game, but Marathi and the Bow Snakes can shoot every hero phase with a CP um, every turn or every shooting phase. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Is this just an hour? Uh, we'll, 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 we'll go a little bit longer. Okay, yeah, I was just yeah, we should probably should have talked about that off, <laughs> off, uh, off camera. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Have you got a hot date you got to go to? Uh, no, I still got thirty minutes. So. 
Yeah, we, oh, oh, well, we were. Uh, but yes, the, the whole point of this, by the way, if you, uh, we, we're not going to go like the two, three hours that you humbly enjoy with uh, my, my chatting. It's meant to be pretty sharp. But uh, oh, we'll, we'll get a couple more questions out of this season. Um, and I'm sure we can go to, there'll be more more stuff we can talk about in future episodes. Um, talk to me about what you don't like. What I don't like? Like for me, like uh, it's a cop out thing, but like I'm, I don't really spend that much time worrying about it. I live in the world of what is, and I can be like, oh, they might change that. But I haven't, I wouldn't say I played enough games, you know. Um, so there's not really anything I would say I don't like yet. It is like, it's like, okay, this is the world I live in now. This thing exists. Like when, uh, you know, the incarnate was out, like, okay, how do I beat it? Yeah. Rather than this is too powerful. Like, well, what are the, how do I solve this issue? Okay, if you shoot enough at it with one, uh, you know, one damage shot, you can kill the incarnate in a couple of turns, right? And so, like, I wouldn't say there's nothing I, I dislike. I think there's two. I've got two gripes so far. Uh, Marathi did nothing wrong. Yes, I agree. Grumdy, I agree with you 100. percent Leave Marathi alone. Stop. She, she is fine. Leave my leave my waifu out of this. <laughs> um, the two things that I'm thinking so far, outside of the six versus twelve, and I will get to that in a minute. I think the two things that I'm thinking at the moment is one, I dislike that this battle pack only has four battle plans, four, not four. Uh, so four, four battle tactics um, without having a GC. So I hate that, that like Sons of Behemad, uh, Flesh Eater Courts, Grizzle Gore, uh, if you're doing Ogre Moor tribes with, you know, your Frost Lord on Stonehorn and your Mournfang and things like that. There are certain you drag your dragon armies. I hate that you have to go into your battle tactics, uh, your your book battle tactics, um, and you can't be self-contained in the general's handbook alone. So okay. I'd want I want five. Um, I, I do miss against the odds, but like actually, I'm not talking that. I'm just talking like just having five. Like I actually like that that's gone because that was the auto, right? I like having to like like solve the problem. All right, what do I need? Oh, I can do this one. You're like, that's one of the things like, and I was thinking about this, like, I don't think I've won a, yeah, I got into the finals of a GT up here. I haven't won a tournament in third edition yet. And I started realizing like, oh, that's a me issue because I'm like, oh, because the game's a lot harder <laughs> and there's a lot more players. <laughs> you know, like if I, I would just roll into an RTT and like win it, I'm like, yeah, this is pretty easy. But it was like, the game's a lot harder. So the, I wanted my goal for this season and this year is to step my game up and yeah. like it's like and so it's like it's it's i love the complicated but one thing it's a lot harder to teach somebody the game yeah. is it's like woo there's a lot you know because you have to assume they know a lot of stuff before you even get into uh oh and now it's your monstrous rampage yeah i i was actually thinking about doing um some things around you know getting started new people and it's really hard it's incredibly hard. Like long gone are the days of four pages of rules, you know, simplified war scrolls. The complexity levels are through the roof. And, you know, I almost would love to be the the new player and go, what's this actually like? I, I think it'd be just over the top. Yeah. I think, so. uh, did you ask the six or 12 yet? No, yeah. we'll get to it. Get to it. Oh, the other, the, the other, the, the other the other one is um is um i don't like that the general's handbook only has like five to eight really good battle plans i feel like the general's handbook is meant to be a competitive match play tool and i feel like there are too many battle plans that have are non-usable you know things mm. like twists and t twists and turns is a terrible battle plan that i don't think you'll ever see at a tournament unless you're shits and giggles um even things like path of the champion it can create too much of a lead by allowing the person who goes second to battle tactics so like for me i want to i want to see like 10 out of the 12 be viable yeah. at tournaments yes i would love that too whereas like uh and like i always try to remember like you know again vince and tom at warhammer weekly digested so much of their content realizing you know we are in this this the sandbox of tournament play and you realize how many people will never go to a tournament never and so realizing hey, it's okay for them to get stuff too like and that's why i feel like we can like that's why i dig about rerolling ones we're very casual right and so like people even hate when we take shooting because <laughs> shooting is a one-way interaction you get shot 
it, but that, that's part of a tournament. Like when people play me at a tournament and I'm like, oh, this is not going to be skits and jokes and stuff. This is going to, I'm going to shoot off your important stuff, turn one, FYI, but we can get a beer after. Uh, but like, and so I'm not, I'm not okay. I'm okay with like, but I would love tournaments not to use the same ones. Cause you like, you'd see it ever and ever, like over and over again. I would like, and that's the problem. If we've only got five to six tournament and like the last, the last couple of generals handbooks have only had like five to seven battle plans that are tournament friendly, Yeah, which then means every tournament's using five to seven of the same. I'm not saying don't play twists and turns. I'm not saying there's no place for path of the champions. What I am saying is we need to have a really strong kit of to uh, uh, battle plans for tournament scene and have more for casual open play yeah. or even the non-tournament kind of, I don't know, that that to me. Otherwise, because, yeah, you're right, the tournament's just going to be the same five to seven um, battle plans every single time, which skews the meta, which makes it boring. There's just a lot of negative impacts. And by the way, Twists and Turns is a great battle plan, Brent. Like, don't get me wrong, but I won't be using it for my upcoming GT. I'll tell you that much. It's too swingy. Uh, do you have any favorite battle plans for currently? Yes, I pulled this up. What was it? The, uh, I'm trying to remember the name. One second. Oh, my phone's being weird. Is it Places of Power? Is that one of them? Yep. Yeah. I like that one. So the three I had down were the only oh, position worthy. of power. Sorry, position of power. Yes, sorry. Yeah. We've had plus arcane power. There's like power everywhere. Only the worthy jaws of Galette or um, ours for the taking are probably the ones that I've been <laughs> I've really enjoyed so far. I can tell you one. I well, I think I'll like it more now. But I, last season I really didn't like Prize of Galette because you know you people. It was so easy. It's like all right, this one's the. You know, if you don't take Galician uh, veterans, like, oh, this one's the uh, proven ground. And I'm like, oh man, I have to think too far ahead. I'm <laughs> I'm a, I'm a quick, fast. What's in front of me? I got. I don't want to plan ahead. There's a lot of cool ones. There's a lot of cool ones. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, Arken Mortark of something. So I got I got three more questions that I, that was previously submitted, um, and then we'll we'll kind of wrap this up. I know you got a hot date. Um, you'll have to send I mean, me your photos. Like, she's like at six. I'm like it's above average. <laughs> You're an eleven. You're an oh. eleven. So brings like, get back in shape. Help me. <laughs> Um, so Arcan, uh, so Arcan Mortark of something asking, um, this general's handbook saw Galatian veteran bonds of battle ability go away. Uh, do you think GW is using the season rules as an error uh, to experiment? Um, and do you want to see any rules baked into the core game in the future like that? Um, so I saw the, uh, you know, the half inch thing from the, uh, the, Grand, no, for Galician veterans last season, and now it just has the the battalion, which I really it really opened up, especially as a, a corn player, it opened up a lot because all your stuff's on thirty two mil bases with one inch range, um, and so looking at that, uh, I, I don't know if I would like to see every, it be a, just a regular rule or just improve people's range or whatever, uh, but I do think they test out stuff in this stuff and see how, uh, if they want to keep it maybe for fourth edition, we might see half inch and whatnot, but there's definitely what you want to be able to get. Cause remember how a third edition, it was so restriction, they restrict restricting with the, uh, the new coherency rules, you know? And so just like, you have this big blob of guys that, yeah, this is all I'm getting in. This doesn't, this isn't fun. And I want my stuff to fight, you know, and it will speed up the game. So I do, I hope they keep that. Yeah, same. I, I'd love to see them incorporate it more. I, I actually wouldn't mind seeing things like expert conquerors be incorporated too. Um, I didn't I didn't mind that. I didn't maybe put the restrictions a little heavier or make it, you know, battle line only or like well, just some more maybe like currently you've got to have three units that are expert conquerors. Yeah. But I, yeah, I like that. It, yeah, where you have the minimum, like with the sharpshooters, where it kind of does punish you to use it, make it so you have to take you know three or four units. To be able to get the thing i like that i would have loved at least you know uh, with sh sharpshooters i would have loved to have seen the restriction be at least two of the three units be uh units with a missile attack um if they are sharpshooters then they should be shooty units not just core infantry i think some further restrictions are don't, tightening don't that they up. say you have to shoot doesn't say you have to have a missile no 
No, it's okay. just infantry. It's just infantry. Okay. So you could have just, you know, you, one shooty unit and then two. Who cares? Okay. Oh. But yeah, like, I think there's some lessons to be, to be learned from 40K. And I think the obvious one, the Rust Belt, is terrain rules. I think there's some things we could definitely borrow from our friends. But there's definitely some things that I never want to see. And I think the 40K not targeting a, a hero that's within certain range of a troop, that's been borrowed from 40K. I think there's some things that we could definitely borrow from them. Um, please, terrain rules. And I think we could do a whole show on terrain rules, <laughs> yeah, if, I'm being, if I'm being honest. Indeed. Indeed. Did you like the LVO terrain rules? Yeah, yeah. I like I like that, you know, it tells you where to set them up and kind of thing. And it's like you're trying to – I love the rolling, and then the person decides where they all go. Because, you know, in the book, I think it just kind of tells you roll for each one, where, like, when the, the defender can roll all the terrain dice and then set them up how they would like. I really like that. Kind of following on from that last question, for uh, Manfred kind of asked a similar question around some of the experimenting rules. Do we want to keep? So I, I want you to tell me either keep it or dump it. All right. Okay. Here we go. Bounty bounty hunters. Do we want to see it back? Dump it. Dump it. Yep. Yeah, agreed. Uh, the realm spell, which was um, halve the amount of models counting on the objective. Keep it. Yeah, I liked it. Um, the realm command. Uh, I never used it, so keep it. <laughs> it's, it it's a trick question. No one ever used it. It was crap. Ooh. Move along. It it yeah. was um. So when you completed the charge move, if you had more models, oh, yeah. your, uh, like they strike, like it was the worst, yeah, most it was restrictive. Fun when, you re when you initially read it, you think it's good. They, oh no, they. Oh no, this is terrible. It was so bad. Um, proving grounds. Was it the proving grounds? Dump it. I liked it. I actually didn't mind it. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was definitely, it was that next level of complexity where I was at that season. Like, if I would have focused more, I was like, oh, I, it was a thing I'd always forget to do. Like, oh, I was supposed to pr pr uh, do a proving ground. A lot of people did forget about it. Also, the realm spell. A lot of people forgot about the gaze of Gur as a spell. To be honest. Um, the one thing I will say is I would love to see battle plans that have restrictions like no reserves, put them in the dumpster. I yeah. never want to see them again. I hate that it punishes one particular build while there are no other punishments for shooting armies or charging armies or magic armies. Like it's yeah. just this one specific, I'm paying for it in my uh, allegiance yes. ability or I'm doing, I'm paying for it and you screw me over. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 that is so true because it's like not everybody gets it so, so it might not affect me at all this is great it's just making my opponent worse in stormcast if you're taking silence of the storm that is a critical critical part of your army and even the new beast of chaos like it's a such a big part of your army that uh it just it's almost put that in the oh if we're going to do a narrative event like, if you're going to do that, that's fine. But I also expect to have a battle plan where um, you can't shoot anybody that is outside of 12 on a different battle plan. Or if you are near a terrain feature, you're minus three to casting. <laughs> yeah. Like, if, yeah. if you're going to ruin one person's day, yeah, ruin, let's ruin, 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 yeah. ruin everyone else's day and we're all balanced yeah. ruin together. Yeah. Um, so the last burning question, unless the Super Chat has some, some quick questions for us, and this is definitely going to be a monthly thing, so... Um, uh, stay tuned. You know, we definitely want to have more of these types of discussions where we can you know, one interact with you, but two, you know, share some of our thoughts and our some observations, whether it's from competitive scenes, from our battles, our own list tech and ideas, and and things like that. Um, is that general's handbook with a six to twelve months? So traditionally, since the dawn of time, the general's handbook has been a twelve month publication. For the first time ever, we've turned into a six month publication so um damon asked should it be six or 12. initially i thought six was way too fast this is like wait but then realizing how long six months is and i think i think people were ready to move on from because we, we could still be in bounty hunters we can still be in all that and i think we were all ready like not all but i think a lot of us were ready to move on past this book but initially my first thoughts like it's it's six months. My first thought was like, we're in Gerstil? But then it was like, oh, six months, that's going to be over in like 
like that. No, it was, it was good. I was, I'm ready for the change myself. And so it's like, hey, this is now it's just like, I think it also depends on how many games you get in. I think if people who play a lot, they're ready to go on. It's similar to people who like, if they get a model and that they, they had, they bought 10 years ago and they finally painted it up and they put it on the table, like these free go crossbowmen, and all of a sudden they're gone. And I'm like, well, if somebody has been playing with them since they came out, they're like, well, I got my use out of them. You know, it, we're good. But if you just start getting into it now, like, hey, I just bought this book. I got two games in. I have to buy another one. It all depends on the person. Yeah, it's a it's a very good point that you make there, because um, so you, you and I have both been playing for a long time. Yeah. 12 months with our rose tinted glasses seems like a good time. But I remember tournaments at the back end of a general's handbook. I was sick of the repetitive battle plans. I was ready to move on. Um, and that's not even thinking about some of the bad things around things like um, bounty hunters, as you've already mentioned. Like if we were in a 12-month season, then we would still be in bounty hunters playing those battle plans. My issue with the six months is the cost. That's my one gripe. It's because, as you've mentioned, there are some people who only play a cup, maybe they play once a month um, or they play, you know, once every couple of weeks and they don't get enough games out and to, to charge them a full cost for a, a, a general's handbook. And most of it's crap. Let's be honest. Got yeah. The core rules, the core <laughs> rules uh, don't add any value. Um, the endless <laughs> spells, the endless spells were basically just a reprint, except the FAQ had been brought into it. Like, you know, um, Purple Sun, uh, Change no, it was, Range, it was and things still like the old that. Ones. They, they That's just, right, it was too. It, it was just the old ones. <laughs> I, th I think for me, like, I want to, I'd like to see it stay as six months, but I want the cost brought down. I want you to slim that down book so it's very thin, bring down that cost 50%. Then yeah. I think we're okay. Because I love the freshness of six months but I don't like the cost. That's perfect. That's reasonable. Keep six months, but Hey, don't gouge us. Don't make us buy a, uh, you know, a black library audio book that you've bought or you bought because you decided to put it. Let's call back from the beginning, but yeah, because sometimes you feel like, Hey, like I like your hobby. I like the stuff that you produce. I'm going to buy stuff, but don't make me feel bad about buying this stuff. That's like when I feel bad about it, it's like, cause the hobby is expensive. It's always been expensive. Always will be. But it's like when I feel like, hey, man, this doesn't feel good when I'm buying this now. Like like I said, just make it cheaper. If you're going to ask me to buy it twice, there we go. Yeah, f find a digital solution. Find a way to be able to introduce other concepts. And, you know, as Nate said, you know, it could be a 12-month. Look, I like the fact that this season – it wasn't a complete brand new general's handbook. There were still six battle plans that stayed the same. The theme kind of changed other for like, you know, Galatian champion and Galatian veteran, but there was some commonality. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think, um, and, and like, and weird knob uh, said as well, you know, I'd love to see maybe a open play version of the general's handbook once a year. Um, I think that'd be great. You know, bring some mm -hmm. narrative and open play. So you have your competitive general's handbook, and then you have the equivalent to bring narrative and open play to life. Because I think that's such an untapped market. And mm -hmm. there's, there's things like siege battles and there is uh, what uh, doubles and there is uh, there's so many other ways to play Age of Sigma that um, I feel like we could put a bit of focus there as opposed to just spinning the wheel. Like yeah. it's bad enough how many battle. I would say we definitely get kind of locked into this like mindset of everything's match play match play nothing else exists but there's a whole like my buddy uh, brent who's in the chat now he's doing uh, a lot of narrative stuff narrative realms is going to be his new channel and so there is a whole nother group of people who you know they they like the game but they're not interested in say uh min maxing okay why would you take that unit that unit's trash why would you take this you should take this and it's like i'm taking this unit because i love it you know, I'm like, yeah, they, these are awesome. I, I want to play with this. Not like, you know, I don't need to be, or they don't need to be demeaned from taking what they like. And I think like there can be a lot of like almost rivalries where we're all just love this game. We should like enjoy it. They're, they don't have to, they don't have to be yeah. uh, completely different sides of the pendulum, right? Like I, I still think of one of my favorite battle plans and I can't think of where I saw it, but it was, um, it was like a match play feel, you know, A versus B. But there was one objective. You had somebody at the altar trying to kill somebody. 
and you made a roll every turn and basically if you could do certain damage to the the, the person on the altar the game is won by the by the defender if you as yeah, the attacker I mean, uh, could go and go rescue go rescue the person at the altar then you win yeah. like I mean, that's old, that's, uh, that's old competitive path glory, uh, old path of glory mission yeah it was a lot of yeah was, that's how i fell in love with the game like path to glory you're building up your armies you're doing this stuff and like getting back that back into it that way is also awesome because there's most there is you have all these toys you just have to find an opponent who's willing to play the way like i even say people who hate this version like you can still have the books on your shelf you can go grab second edition and like you just have to find somebody hey let's play second edition where we like to play you know you see it now people still play eighth edition you know fantasy and stuff like that so it's you just have to find a, a group of people who agree with you but anyway it's a big place Overall, I'm thinking we are in a good spot. I, I'm I'm genuinely excited about this particular general's handbook. Um, there's not a no, there's not a lot I dislike, um, and I'm feeling a lot more free when it comes to list creation and the way we play the game. So I think that's a massive win. I'm obviously we've got six months potentially, and uh, we don't, we don't know when the next one's coming out, but we know it's a, a part tour. To bring the show to an end, Jack. What's on the pad for the next four weeks, given that this is a four-week podcast and uh, we, we're going to record every month? Um, maybe the last weekend of every month we'll kind of work out a schedule. For sure. Work but, out a schedule. But, well, but what's, what's, what's on the pad? What, what's in your uh, Warhammer journey for the next four weeks? Okay, uh, I got a GT coming up, Sparkle Party. It's in Seattle. Uh, we actually got a lot of people traveling up for it, which I'm excited for. It's going to be my – you know, because I went to LVO. It was like my first GT in months. I made my list to win fast and lose fast. I lost fast a lot. I don't want to, it's, I was a narrative player that weekend. I don't want to talk about it, uh, but I had a lot of fun. Um, so I'm trying to, my goal is to get better again. Like I'm uh, buddies with Mason, who's part of the rerolling was now. And he's like, he's a really good player. He's top tier guy. He was just on a, a saga of dice. And so, uh, yeah, I'm talking with him, picking his brain. But again, like I said earlier, like I'm, I have my list. I'm trying to go there. want to go three and two, start climbing back. You know, I, cause I remember like, I was I was a I was a scalp. People were like, oh my god, I'm, I beat Jack, and now I'm just like, oh yeah. People like locally think I'm good at this game. I'm like, I'm not good right now, so I want to get good again. Uh, and uh, so back to painting, we got a lot of stuff and uh, uh, content coming out. Rerun the ones, uh, a lot of stuff we can't talk about right now. But yeah, so just loving Warhammer. I dig it. What about you, sir? Uh yeah, good question. I am having a bit of a holiday, actually, because it's funny because there's no real tournaments that I can attend in March. Um, I have a music festival that I'm going to that clashes with a GT. Someone asked me if I was going to a Victoria GT. Unfortunately, I've got tournaments that clash. I've got like a heavy metal festival that I'm glad that finally – you know, COVID allows us to, to go into mosh pits and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've got like wrestling shows and I've got all these things that are like conflicting with the tournament scene. So March is a little quieter for me, but I'm going to start actually getting onto my armies on parade project. So I'm playing with Gits. I'm playing with them locally. The army's painted. It's built. I don't have to touch anything. Um, but what I can do is I can start building my my Slaves to Darkness uh, Slanesh army so i'm recreating some old world characters so um i don't know if you you know much about the old world but i've got uh my demon prince i'm converting up to look like a zazel um the okay the yeah. old prince of damnation uh i'm converting up a uh a snake a snake chaos warrior leader um called t'challa who was mm -hmm. um another warhammer fantasy hero um, and I've ordered some bits as well. So I'm playing around with like Chaos Warriors and Chaos Knights to see if I could use like, you know, Hedonite heads or like what I could do to make it a little bit more Slanesh-y. Oh, so, uh, but I April, one... okay. April is my tournament season. I'm getting back into, okay. there's a couple coming in April. So uh, you, like you saw, uh, I made a uh, Balthazar Gelt, right? And I put it, he's on top of my Hurricane. Uh, I request, I want to Grom the Punch. We got those new wolves that came out. Terry, come on, you can you can make a ground the punch out of something. What would you put it? What what model would you make it though? Like I've already yeah. made a marsh crawler um out of trogoths, but I don't can, have a there's that fat scaven that is for blood bowl. That could be like a body, and then kind of gitify it and do a head swap and cut off the tail, do something, but or you know, so you take idea. a uh, <laughs> take the blood stoker. <laughs> there we go. Thick body, put him on there. 
<laughs> By the way, I just want to call out his comment. I actually agree with both Weird Knobs and uh, Kieran. Is I wish we got to stay in uh, the Thondia battle pack. Um, there was five battle plans in Thondia. There was a set of rules. It feels like we would just we just breeze straight over it. Like nobody actually played it. I would have loved to have seen a tournament weekend where we literally just play through all five battle plans um, and that's it. Like incarnate or no incarnate, like I don't care, but I feel like it had a really good structure of five mm -hmm. battle plans that you could run a narrative or competitive event purely around Fondia. So um, I would love to see more of those campaign books uh, and, and, and don't rush through them. Like I felt like Broken Realms, we rushed straight through them. Like we didn't actually get to settle in and actually yeah. explore them. It was just out, 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 yeah. out. Like, what are the edition. rules? What are the rules? You didn't really just go, what is this changing? Rather than, you know, play some of these missions or whatnot. All right. Jack, mm -hmm. if people want to watch you more, uh, you obviously if you're new to if you're new to Jack, yeah. um rolling ones, like go on there. Like we're on uh, Instagram. No, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Um, but yeah, so come say what's up if you're in Seattle. Uh, hit me up. We'll, we'll get a game. Record at my house downstairs. We'll be on the uh, internet. So, yeah. Amazing. Sure. And uh, you you all know I've got a Squig show coming up uh, tomorrow. So we're going to talk Squigs and uh, Grots. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of good content coming out in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Sure. Uh, finest hour. Let's go. Love it. Lawmaster of Sotec. Um, Shout out to there Lawmaster of Sotec in the chat. So Simon, hope you get better if you're in the hospital. Shout out to everybody. And uh, thanks for everyone for joining uh, episode one. If there are things that you want us to talk about, we are going to have, like I said, a, uh, a monthly topic. We'll explore. We'll source questions. So if you have questions even outside of the topic, feel free, whether it is a tactical piece, whether it's a law piece, whether it's whatever you want to see, we'll, we'll answer it or make up an answer as we go. But Jack, thank you so much. Episode one, law, ma uh, law master, the finest <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed episode one. If you have any uh, things that you want us to focus on, leave it in the comment section because we will read them and we will use them to source uh, the new episodes. Sure. Yeah. Enjoy Jack, life. Thanks. Smile thanks, every thanks day. very much. Yeah. See you, Ron. Bye. Thanks for hanging around until the end. I hope you enjoyed that video and you walked away with a few new ideas. Now, if you did, I would love it if you press like on the video as well as left me a comment with your thoughts. The conversation will continue over on Discord, and the link is down below in the episode description. I also want to give a massive shout out to the AOS Coach patrons and YouTube members who are supporting the channel and the growth that you're seeing here. So cheers, you are all bloody legends. And until next time, don't roll a double one on a spell cast.